Joining us now from Brussels is Israel Ayom journalist Eldad Bek. Shalom. Hi. You're at the European Jewish Association's Community Leaders Conference, and we saw the troubling anti-Semitism survey that was presented there yesterday. What's next in the war against anti-Semitism? You know, with all due respect to the statements and press conferences, is there anything practical that could and should be done? It's a um, it's a very good question. I mean, we've we've had so many conferences and so many anti um, uh, reports on anti-Semitism in in Europe in recent years. Uh, it seems that uh, it has become a business or industry uh, on its own. Uh, while as things are not being uh, done concretely on the ground, I think that the the main uh, issues that uh, are facing the uh, Jewish communities in Europe today are two. First of all the uh, l um, legislative efforts in different countries um, uh, that are uh, aimed at uh, not allowing Jews to live their religious uh, traditions. Um, shchita, mila, these are things that uh, are being uh, forbidden in certain countries, including the country uh, in which uh, we are here now uh, today, Belgium. Um, and this is um, practical anti-Semitism. This is not allowing Jews to enjoy uh, the freedom of religion. And this is something that has to be dealt with uh, by the, uh, the highest political uh, levels of uh, the EU and of the different countries. The other thing is that um, we still see um, hesitations in dealing with the uh, main um, anti-Semitic threat uh, nowadays in Europe, which is coming from um, uh, Muslim communities around the uh, EU, um, from um, not only radical uh, elements within these communities, I think that one of the interesting uh, um, um, inputs of the uh, report that we've seen yesterday was that actually anti-Semitism is uh, very much spread in uh, Muslim communities. Um, and um, the uh, political level in different countries um, has not done anything to tackle uh, this problem because they are afraid to get in uh, a conflict with the uh, immigrant uh, communities. Now, this problem has become uh, much worse since uh, the so-called um, immigration crisis of 2015 or so-called uh, refugee crisis. And uh, this is a physical, a real physical threat for Jews all over, mainly in, in, in Western Europe. And as long as it's not being tackled by um, very serious steps of the, uh, from the uh, side of the authorities, um, we are not going to see an end to it. And how would you characterize anti-Semitism in Europe in 2021? I would say that anti-Semitism nowadays is very much live and kicking, unfortunately. Um, it's not something that has to do with uh, history. I think that we've heard uh, testimonies uh, coming from too many um, uh, communities, mainly in Western uh, Europe, uh, in this last uh, uh, two days of conference, uh, of Jews um, actually begging to have the right to still live as Jews in Europe and feeling that this right is being denied from them. And uh, they say it very clearly, we do not feel at home anymore. And this is something, this is a cry that the EU uh, is still not willing to listen to. And uh, they, it's a political problem. It's a, uh, you know, we, we tend to uh, uh, um, focus on the, the new anti-Semitism regarding uh, Israel, which is a huge problem uh, on, on itself. Uh, but uh, there is a huge problem also for the Jews trying to be Jews in Europe and not having uh, the ability to do so anymore. Eldad Chancellor uh, Merkel visited Israel just uh, recently. You know, she's known as a friend of the Jewish state. Do you think that we'll miss her when we meet the next leaders of Germany? Well, um, there have been two uh, Angela Merkels. Uh, I believe that in her first years um, in her post, she was extremely committed uh, to uh, Israel and to um, developing uh, Jewish life uh, in Germany again and fighting uh, anti-Semitism. This um, commitment and engagement uh, became, became 
um, less fervent in, in recent years, probably because she was too busy with too many other problems. Um, and she understood that uh, things are not as uh, white and black as some people try to uh, present them. Um, we um, will definitely uh, miss a German chancellor that has been that committed to Israel and to the Jews because I don't see in the uh, current uh, political German arena somebody who would come with the same commitment. I think that the, the most likely to be uh, Chancellor uh, Olaf Scholz of the SPD, of the Social Democratic Party, uh, is definitely representing a uh, continuation line with that of uh, Merkel regarding Israel. But unfortunately, among his party and among the two other parties that are going to be in the uh, future government, the uh, Greens and the, uh, the, the Liberals, uh, there are too many people who uh, are, have grown extremely critical uh, of Israel and want to see uh, the relations with the Jewish state normalized, being downgraded. And how do you relate to the, the protests against Germany regarding the support of anti-Israel and radical left organizations? It's a very legitimate um, protest, um, bringing up uh, to a public discussion uh, some very important issues that have been um, extremely problematic in the relations between both countries. We cannot ignore, keep on ignoring the fact that uh, Germany has a, uh, um, a double attitude uh, on one side um, declaring its commitment to Israel, on the other side working against this commitment by financing too many uh, anti-Israeli activities, anti-Israeli bodies, voting against uh, Israel uh, in international um, uh, uh, institutions and uh, organizations. This is something that uh, friends do not do. If the Germans are really our good friends, they should start acting out as our friends. Generally speaking, Eldad, do you think that Israel should be putting in more effort in strengthening ties with Europe? Absolutely. I think that um, uh, despite the disappointment that we um, uh, keep on having um, um, coming uh, from the uh, very hostile uh, EU positions um, and the automatic uh, pro-Palestinian uh, support, um, I think that we should keep on doing everything possible to change the uh, discourse and narrative uh, here at the EU. I don't think that uh, accepting everything that the EU uh, dictates is a good foreign policy for Israel. I think that um, in the case of uh, combating uh, anti-Semitism, um, our foreign minister, Yair Lapid, has done a very bad service in um, being too quick to adopt the um, EU new uh, strategy for combating uh, anti-Semitism. We've heard here in Brussels in the last two days uh, a lot of criticism on this uh, 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 strategy. I think that it would have been much better for the Israeli uh, government to talk first with the uh, Jewish communities in Europe uh, before it uh, just jumped and adopted the uh, EU uh, so-called uh, strategy. Eldad Bek, Israel Ayom, speaking to us from Brussels. Thank you very much. Thank you. All the best.